Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to return to the nearest star system to us, Proxima Centauri. And we're going to talk about this discovery from the system, that may also suggest something unusual about one of its planets. Let's talk about this, and welcome to What The Math. So back in 2016, there was a lot of hype and a lot of different news about this newly discovered planet, Proxima Centauri b. The closest exoplanet to us that also seemed to possess a lot of Earth-like properties. It was in the habitable zone of its parent star, it had somewhat Earth-like mass and also Earth-like size. So this was definitely one of the most exciting discoveries of the last um, 5 years or possibly even the entire century. But then, a few years later, the scientists, as they were looking at the star system, discovered that there was a bit of a wobble. The so-called radial velocity wobble. This is how we've discovered over 800 different exoplanets, and this to us confirmed that something else was happening here because the star was wobbling as if something massive was pulling at it. This massive object was very likely another planet. The planet we now refer to as Proxima Centauri c. Now, back when we discovered it, we didn't really know much about it, and we actually still kind of don't, but we assumed that this was a massive planet, and we also assumed that because it's relatively massive and possibly even a little bit brighter than its partner, we could maybe see it directly, using the infrared telescopes or using other telescopes that we've previously used to try to identify planets directly. Over 50 different planets have been discovered by directly looking at them, and um, most of them are usually really massive and also obviously really, really bright. And so, by looking at some of the previous data from the telescope known as the Very Large Telescope, because I guess it's really large, actually that's just an official name, VLT is basically responsible for discovering a lot of different things. And it's one of the most incredible facilities in the world, located in the mountains of Chile. It also has a lot of different international communities living together, and um, a lot of different scientists working and trying to study the night skies. And one of the instruments inside VLT, known as Sphere, is actually able to detect exoplanets like it did right here, the first time ever, back in 2017. It discovered the planet known as Hipparchos 65426b, by obviously looking directly at the star system and seeing a really, really bright yellow spot that you see on the screen. And by the way, if you're curious, this is really, really far away. This is like double the distance of Pluto to the Sun. So this really massive planet is in this particular star system, and we thought that maybe something similar is happening in the nearby Proxima Centauri. And although for this particular study, the scientists didn't directly use the telescope to look at the um, actual star system, they did use some of the previous data that was collected over the years to try to identify if we've actually already seen this planet orbiting somewhere in the star system. And basically, this is exactly what the paper you can find in the description below discusses. They tried to identify if anything was seen and if anything was visible in the old data. And they discovered that, well, there is a sign right here in April of 2018 of something being possibly visible. But the thing is, it's actually a little bit too bright to be a planet itself. As a matter of fact, this was kind of reminiscent of the other really famous discovery of the planet known as Dagon, also known as FOMO HO B. But you may have seen one of the recent videos where I also talk about what we've just discovered from this particular star system. FOMO HO B is not a real planet. It's actually signs of collisions, or basically a sign of two comets colliding that produced the really bright and very quite visible um, signal. This was essentially a load of dust and that was slowly spreading away from the central point. But what exactly is happening with the similar observation here from Proxima Centauri? Well, right now, the best sort of guess here is that what they were looking at is essentially some sort of a really highly reflective material, similar to what happened in FOMOHO system. But does it imply that we've just observed another collision? Well, maybe, but also it could be the rings of the actual planet itself. Because a large enough ring around the planet, like for example rings of Saturn, would probably produce very similar observations, they would produce these similar reflections that would be visible by the uh, VLT's sphere instrument. 
My favorite example of large rings that are really easily visible is the object we know as J1407b. Here in this star system, the rings are really huge, so if we were to take a look at this directly, we would very likely see a lot of different reflection coming from the star system. But at the same time, I guess maybe it could be other sources of dust. It could also be obviously um, just some sort of a unusual formation of comets or cometary outgassing, but it just wouldn't really make sense that we've detected it in the same region where we expected the planet to be. So for this reason, as of right now, the best guess is that maybe, after all, this was actually the reflections coming from the rings of this particular gas giant or some sort of a ice giant that's orbiting Proxima Centauri that reflected just enough light for us to actually see it shine in the um, VLT sphere instrument. And the reason we might not be seeing it anymore is because, well, maybe it's just aligned differently to us now and is not reflecting as much light. Now, this is all very preliminary, but it is very intriguing because if this system does have a gas giant or an ice giant with some sort of a ring system around it, this could also imply that there could be maybe moons around that particular planet and those moons might possess intriguing conditions similar to the moons like Enceladus and Titan here in the solar system. In other words, those moons could be maybe even habitable or at least have signs of alien life. And studying planets in this particular system would actually allow us to understand a lot of things about our galaxy and also other important systems like TRAPPIST-1. Mostly because this is literally the closest object to us outside of the solar system and also because obviously at least one major project is currently trying to find a way for us to reach the star system, the so-called project Starshot. This is hopefully going to materialize sometime in the next few years. And the idea here is, well, we're basically going to try to use lasers to push all of these really, really tiny explorer probes and eventually have them reach really high velocities, probably um, approximately 20% the speed of light. It will take maybe 20 years or so to reach this star system, but this would definitely at some point allow us to investigate the first ever star system outside of our own. And by studying this star system, and by actually trying to identify what happens around red dwarfs in general, we'll hopefully be able to identify the likelihood of discovering a terrestrial planet, a habitable world, and maybe even extraterrestrial life around one of these red dwarf stars somewhere out there in the galaxy. Because red dwarfs are still the most prevalent and the most common type of a star in the galaxy, and we have so many of them in the neighborhood. And on top of that, all of the Earth-like planets discovered so far have always been around red dwarfs. So this is why we're kind of interested in discovering more about these particular star systems and in trying to learn if maybe one of these one day will have the future home for humanity. The other reason is, of course, more in regards to the actual star itself. Well, first of all, we kind of hope that one day we'll become interstellar species and possibly even survive for billions of years. This is essentially what we are hoping. Obviously, things are right now not going well for us, but we might improve. And if we do survive for billions of years, and at some point our sun reaches the point where it can no longer support Earth, which is going to be in under 2 billion years from now, we're going to have to start looking for a new home. And right now, red dwarfs are that best choice for us. Not only are they able to survive much longer than the sun, they actually stay very similar, or basically don't change much, for billions and even trillions of years. They can survive much longer than any other star, and in about a trillion years from now, most of the stars are actually going to be this right here. And this is probably where we're going to find most of the terrestrial planets in the future as well. But this is like really, really distant future. Like we're talking about science fiction distant, even more so. But anyway, those are all obviously interesting questions that we're hoping to answer one day, but for now, we're just hoping to discover a new home and possibly a new planet to go and explore. And right now, that best planet for us is definitely Proxima Centauri b, which is why we kind of want to know what partners it has, and whether this new observation suggests that its partner may have rings, which also means that it may have moons. But for now, that's kind of all we know. Once we discover more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.
And honestly, I cannot wait for more studies about this particular star system. It's super awesome that we were able to find this planet, and it's even more awesome that we're going to be able to one day hopefully visit it. And if we ever get to visit any exoplanet at all, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the first one ever. Simply because it's the closest, and simply because it has the highest chance of supporting human life. But this is all in the future. Distant future. Let's hope that we're still around.